Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio, and today we're going to talk about, ooh, I got a story for you. Yes, I. you know, the story I'm about to tell you is one of my favorite stories because it has so many implications. It can be viewed from so many different perspectives, but I thought I'd take this story today that I'm going to share with you and really tie it into sales and how a lot of people... I'll say stagnate in sales. In other words, they reach a certain plateau and they can't get past that. And in fact, over time, I would argue that they'll hit the plateau, stay there for a while, and then begin to decline. And it happens for one simple reason. But before I give you the reason, I got a story for you. So I'm going to take some liberties with this story, but it'll make the point. So one day, a priest and his pupil were going through the countrysides, right? They're going from village to village, really preaching, you know, the gospel. And so they come across this village, and the village is so poor and so destitute. It's just it's just pathetic. And the priest and the pupil try to find out more about this small little town, and they come to find out that they live off a cow. In other words, the milk that they get from the cow is really how they're able to sustain themselves. You know, they're just basically, you know, trying to make it happen. You know, that's all they have. But the whole town, basically a real small town, depends on this one cow, the production of this one cow. So that evening, the priest and the pupil go through the town and they set up camp outside the small town. That night, the priest tells his pupil, I need you to do something. Pupil says, what is that, sir? He says, I want you to go back into that town. He says, if you notice at the edge of the town on the other side, there's a cliff. He said, yes. He said, what I want you to do is take that cow that they have tied up, and I want you to walk it over to the cliff and just push it over the cliff. Pupil's like, what? What do you want me to do? Said, I'll repeat, I want you to go into that town. I said, I want you to take the cow, basically steal the cow, take it over to the cliff, and just push it over the cliff right? And get rid of the cow. And the pupil's like, you know, I I don't don't want to do this. But finally, the priest says, son, you must have faith. You need to have faith. And if you have faith, you will do this. And of course, the pupil didn't know, you know, just he says, okay. So the pupil goes into the town at night, nobody's awake, grabs the cow, takes it to the edge of the cliff, you know, basically, you know, pushes the cow over the cliff, cow obviously dies. Now, they continue on the way that evening, continue on. Well, that morning, the town wakes up to find out that their sacred cow is gone. The cow that provides their sustenance is gone, right? And the panic, you can almost imagine what happened, right? The panic that the cow was gone was incredible. Well, back to the priest and the pupil. The pupil felt just, I mean, he was the, he was just feeling guilty, right? And years passed, years passed, and now the pupil was now a priest, But in his mind, he always wondered, you know, he thought back at the time where he did that, where he committed that dastardly deed of killing that cow. And he always thought to himself, I wonder what happened to that town. I wonder what happened to that town. So he makes a decision. He decides to go back and visit the town. It's the only way that he can absolve himself from all the guilt that he's been carrying all these years. So he goes back to the town and he doesn't know what to expect. But when he gets there, what once was a poor town is now a prosperous town. It is like, you know, there's people, there's houses, there are churches. I mean, it is a prosperous town. And, you know, he just doesn't understand. He's like, well, what happened? I thought for sure that this, you know, town would disappear after I killed their sacred cow. Well, as he walked through the small town, a lot of stuff going on, he finds this old guy who's been around long enough to remember that cow. And so he introduces himself, but he didn't tell him what he had done. He, he introduces himself as a priest and just, you know, t- starts talking to the old man. And they start having polite conversation. And eventually the priest gets around to asking the question. I said, you know, uh, when I came through here many years ago, I remember that this was a very poor town. I said, you know, how did you turn it around? You know, how did it happen? Well, the old man said, well, it was a, the darndest thing happened. He said, one day, one day we woke up and the cow was missing. Now, at this point, the priest is kind of holding it in because he feels guilty because he's the guy that did it. But the old man continues. He said, we woke up and the cow's missing. We looked all over this cow and we realized that the cow must have gotten loose and fell over this cliff. And we were like just in sheer panic what to do. So what we did was we went down there, got the cow, basically took some of the meat 
you know, for ourselves, but then we took the rest of the meat to market. And when we went to market, we bought some chickens, right? And so we bought a whole little flock of chickens and we brought those back. And then those chickens obviously started producing eggs, you know, so we had a lot of eggs left over. So we took those, you know, spare eggs into the market and we made more money. And with the extra money we got, we started planting little things like tomatoes, just stuff that we can grow quickly. But we started growing them so quickly that we had, you know, left over. We had a surplus. We went back into the market and we sold them and we made even more money. Then we started investing in like wheat, corn, you know, stuff that you can really harvest. And because we had bumper crops, in other words, surplus again, we then took that extra money, bought some livestock. And from there on out, you know, everything just grew. And that's what you see today. But it all started because we were forced to think about how can we do something differently now that the cow was no longer there. Now, I have always loved that story. I've always felt bad for the cow and the, the pupil who then became a priest because he was forced to do something he didn't want to do. But also because of what he did was unethical. He would force this town to face the fact that now they had no sacred cow to depend on. And I love this story because I'm wondering, I'm wondering if you're listening to this, do you have a sacred cow that needs killing? Because see, when the cow was dead, it forced the townspeople to think differently. They now had to come up with a way to survive. They could no longer depend on the sacred cow. They now had to be creative in how they were gonna survive. They now had to find new ways to make money, new ways to put food on the table. They were forced, forced to do something differently. Now, how does this tie into sales? When I see salespeople sometimes, and I've had this, I've had people who've worked for me under me, whether I was vice president of sales or president of sales and marketing, I've had this happen. I've had salespeople who were in the company for 10, let's say 15 years in that range and are used to selling a certain product. And because they're used to selling a certain product, that's all they keep selling. Now, our company would pump out new products, but still, these salespeople would sell only what they were used to selling. Those products, those go-to products, were the sacred cows. And because they only depended on the sacred cows because they didn't want to learn anything new, they always didn't sell as much. Early on, they sold a lot when the products were new. But once the products reached a certain level of maturity, there wasn't that much market for them. But nonetheless, these salespeople refused to learn the new products. Let me say it again. These salespeople wanted to sell the sacred products, the sacred cow products, and they refused to learn the new products. And that's what always held them back. Now, I've also seen companies or market segments where we don't, we don't want to go into a new market. We've always played it safe by being in A market. But instead of looking at markets in B, C, and D, they always stuck with A. Why? Because much like the sacred cow, that was a sacred market. We know this market. We're familiar with this market. Uh, we don't want to take the time to learn other markets. And I've seen this with clients. Some salespeople only go after certain clients with a certain profile instead of expanding their portfolio and going after a new type of client. Why? Because they're comfortable. They're comfortable selling the same products. They're comfortable staying within that market. They're comfortable selling to the same clients. And that's why you need to learn to kill your own sacred cows. In this case, your product, your market, clients that you've always visited, if you're selling the same thing to the same people in the same place, you need to ask yourself, do I need to kill these sacred cows? Now, I'm not saying stop visiting these customers. I'm not saying stop going into the markets or just stop selling the products. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, much like the story is, I can't force you. I can't go in there and take your products away, your market away, your clients away. But maybe you can force yourself to realize that you've created a dependency in a market that is not gonna grow beyond a certain size. And because it's not gonna grow beyond a certain size, your business is not gonna grow beyond a certain size. Your commission check is not gonna grow beyond a certain size. So I am saying mentally kill the sacred cows. And that means start looking for new products to sell. Start thinking about new markets to sell into. Think about new clients to go after as you're still selling your sacred cow material. Go out there and start looking for new products, new markets, new clients, because eventually the sacred cows will be pushed over the cliff. In other words, the products will be discontinued, the markets will dry up, clients will move on, and what are you left with? Nothing. But now is the time to move into new markets, go after new business, and create new opportunities, much like that small village, and one day, you too will be prosperous. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the story. I love that story. Think about how it applies to you and your life. Think about how it applies to you and your business. Are you holding on to something that is holding you back? 
Let me say that again. Are you holding on to something that is holding you back? And if you are, it's time to push it over the cliff. Anyway, that's it for this Sales Influence Podcast. Don't forget to leave me some feedback on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. And let me know what you think. I greatly appreciate the feedback I am getting. Also, check out my sales training website, SeminarsOnSelling.com, where you'll find great training videos for you or your team to help you grow your business so you can sell more. Lastly, I want to thank you for listening. This is Victor Antonio, always reminding you, selling ain't hard when you know how. Take care. Hi, I'm Victor Antonio. I'm an author, sales trainer, and keynote speaker. I'm often asked, what makes a great speaker? Is it someone who delivers real content that the audience can use? Is it someone who engages the audience so they're part of the learning experience? Or is it someone who can motivate an audience to push them beyond their comfort zone and discover new abilities? The answer is yes. But the most important thing to remember is that I'm not there to look good. I'm there to make my client look good. Simply put, it's never about me and it's always about them.